Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt, and today I show you how to make alcohol using sugar and water. So let's go. The uh, most popular video on my channel is a video called Simplest Way to Make Booze at Home. It basically was just a homemade wine video. We just took some grape juice, add some sugar, a little yeast, voila, about 10 days later we had wine. Uh, one of the questions I get in that about that video and about the concept of general is like, hey, I don't have 100% juice, can you use juice like drinks? Well, if you use stuff like high C or whatever, they have preservatives, that's bad for the yeast. Then the next question I get is, well, can I use other juices like orange juice or grapefruit juice? Well, those juices are too acidic for the yeast, and the yeast generally won't survive in those environments. So then I eventually get to the question, well, hey, how about sugar and water? Can I just use sugar and water? The answer is yes, but it won't, the final result won't be what you think. Um, one thing about using grape juice, apple juice, something like that to make homemade alcohol is you get flavor with it. You know, the grape juice imparts some flavor, apple juice imparts some flavor. Also, too, they both add more fermentable sugars for the yeast to eat. Generally, the more the yeast eat, the more alcohol they're able to produce. Thus, you, you want the extra sugar. Uh, but you can produce alcohol with just sugar and water. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I want to do this little experiment, is kind of show you it can be done, but it's probably not what you think it's going to come out to be. Uh, one of the reasons why, and I'll go over a couple real quick. One of the reasons why this will be different than or the homemade wine is first and foremost the sugar that we add is for the yeast. And a lot of people, I, I got a lot of videos, comments on the video, well, God, grape juice is sweet enough and now you're adding sugar, oh the diabetes to the... The sugar's for the yeast and the yeast does a pretty efficient job on that. And if the yeast works through all the sugar, you really have no residual sweetness. You're going to end up with a dry wine. That's why the extra fermentable sugars that are in the, the grape juice or apple juice help, you know, leave a little sweetness in that drink. What's going to happen here, most likely, is that the yeast will process through nearly all the sugar. Regular cane sugar, like we're using, is pretty efficient at being fermented. So there's not going to be hardly any sugar left over so we're going to have a pretty dry bland tasting liquid um, and so that's that's where we're going to have part of the major difference is, is that uh, you know sugar, cane sugar without anything else in there will make you plenty of alcohol but you're not going to have any flavor uh, but like I said I thought we would just give this try uh, Real simple, all you're going to need is a one gallon container. We're going to make a one gallon batch for alcohol. You're going to need a little bit of sugar and some yeast. I'm using wine yeast. You can use regular bread yeast, rapid rise yeast. If you have access to wine or beer yeast, feel free. You can use pretty much any type of yeast except nutritional yeast, and that's because nutritional yeast, those yeast cells are dead. So, no function. But any kind of living type of yeast, feel free to use it. Um, and that's pretty much it. So with that being said, let's make some alcohol. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is heat up a little bit of water. Uh, we're just gonna heat up the water so our sugar can uh, blend in easier. You don't have to bring this to a boil. You can if you want to for sanitation purposes, but um, you don't have to. We're just needing it warm enough where the sugar blends in easily. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quart and a half of uh, water. We'll use the other uh, to, to get to one gallon we'll add cold water and that will bring our liquid to the proper temperature to pitch our yeast so it works out just fine. We are going to add two pounds of sugar. Now I can already hear some of you out there, two pounds of sugar, that's insane. You're, are you crazy? You're a crazy man. We're going to do a hydrometer reading and what a hydrometer reading does is it lets us know the potential fermentable sugars in something or, or what's called our original gravity. 
And that kind of gives us an idea of the potential alcohol we can make. A pound of sugar into one pound of water brings your specific gravity to around 1.040, maybe 1.045 at the highest, but somewhere around there. If we were to ferment down to 1.010, that would only get us to around 3.9% alcohol by volume. Again, the yeast is, or the sugar is for the yeast. It's not what you're going to end up consuming. Yeast is going to eat most of the sugar. So if we want a higher ABV, we're going to have to ramp it up. So we're going to have to add an additional, additional pound. That will get us anywhere between 1.080 and 1.090. Again, shooting for that 110 mark. Now we're like 8, 9, 10% alcohol by volume. Now we've got something uh, of substance or whatever. Now we're, not, we're leaving the session beers, making something stronger. So it seems like a lot of sugar, but it really isn't. And again, we're, we're adding that to a one whole gallon of water. You're not, most likely, you're not going to drink the whole gallon of, of booze. But again, the yeast take care of that. So that being said, let me get this sugar in. Um, as far as any substitutes on the sugar, yeah, you could use yeast. Uh, that's actually called mead. If you just uh, or or yeast, you could use honey if you want. Uh, that's actually called mead, and I have a video uh, on how to make mead. I'll leave a link up here. Uh, I've done a variation where I've used uh, maple syrup. You can use brown sugar. You can use uh, agave nectar. What have you? Cane sugar is usually the easiest and cheapest to use, so I'm going to dump her, dump her in, stir her around, we'll make sure she gets fully incorporated. So let me go ahead and finish doing this, adding all the sugar, then I'll add our water and we'll come back to do our, our uh, gravity reading before we throw in the yeast to see where we're at, but like I said, we're most likely going to be in that 1.080 range. And that should hopefully again just 8 9% ABV. So let me get this finished and we'll come right back. All right, so we've got our two pounds of water incorporated to our one, or two pounds of sugar incorporated to our one gallon of water. Now it's time for our hydrometer test and let's see if I was right about the sugar. All right, we are at roughly 1.082-ish, I'm going to say. If we get down to 1.010 on our final gravity, we should be around 9.2-ish, a little over 9% alcohol by volume. That's probably what we should be shooting for. You're not going to get, in a lot of these little experiments, you're not going to get too much higher unless you have a specific high gravity yeast, have yeast nutrients, stuff like that. If you start getting over 1.090 or so, that's what's considered a high gravity brew. You're, you're going to need specialty yeast, you're going to need yeast nutrients. Uh, a little more work than what we're <laughs> looking for this. But this is uh, again toward the top end of the range. We will uh, use our wine yeast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pitch the yeast Temperature wise, you're going to leave this around room temperature, low 70s. Uh, you could get to the 80, you could get up to close to 80. You don't want to get much above 80, and you don't want to get below 60. So, 60 80 range is about right for this. We're going to let this ferment for about two weeks. Uh, anything over a week, if you want to start checking your gravity reading, and if you get, you know, if we'll get to around the 9% alcohol by volume. You should be done, but we're going to give her two full weeks. I'm going to, like I said, use wine yeast. I'm going to use probably two to three grams of yeast is what you'll need. Uh, again, doesn't matter if it's bread yeast or wine yeast or whatever. Roughly two to three grams for uh, a gallon is what we're going to use. So let me pitch the yeast, and we'll come back in a day or two just so I'll let you, let you see it bubble up or whatever. But like I said, this is only sugar and water, so uh, let's see... Uh, how it comes out. All right, so it's the next day, and uh, you can look. You don't see a lot of bubbles, and you don't see any foam. And I'm kind of glad this is happening because I want to talk about this. I get 
this question every once in a while. Hey, it's been a day or two. I don't see foam. I don't see a head on it. Um, there's something wrong. Well, if you notice here, you can see pressure building up. And yep, there we got a bubble. So we're producing CO2. The reaction's happening. It's just not as visual as sometimes you like, especially if you're home brewing uh, beer. Uh, you generally get a nice what's called a croissant or a head of foam on top. Uh, when using other sugars for minerals, sometimes that's different. And especially dealing with just straight sugar, you sometimes don't get the head. Um, home brewing, beer, you know, especially the green barley, but sometimes wheat or whatever, in the grains has special proteins that help form head in beer. Well, you don't have that in just sugar and water or some of the other, uh, just like a straight grape juice or whatever. So you don't necessarily get the same foaming action when fermenting something else as you would always from like a beer. So if you don't see the foam or the head, but you're still getting CO2 production, which we are, as you can see by the bubbles, you're fine. Uh, just make sure you're producing bubbles. If you have an airlock, you'll see the bubbles. If you put a balloon on top, you'll see it fell. As long as that's happening, you have fermentation. So I'll come back at the end of two weeks, and we'll uh, see how this comes out. All right, gang, it's been a couple weeks. Time to do a quick hydrometer reading. I'll give her a little spin. We start off at 1.082, and we're at 1.070. And I've already done the math, cheating a little bit. We're only at one half percent alcohol in volume. Something went wrong. What we have here is a term you'd use as a stuck fermentation. Um, again, this is another little thing. I'm kind of glad it happened because again, it gives me a tap, uh, a chance to talk about that. And this is something you may run into if you do this experiment. Um, what stuck fermentation is is just we've started the fermentation process and it just for whatever reason stopped. Uh, remember, we did, you know, we have moved from 1.082 to 1.070, so we had some kind of fermentation. You saw the bubbles earlier in the video. Um, now we got to figure out, well, why did this happen? Um, there are a few uh, things we can look at. First, the yeast. Um, I did use a pack of Mutton's yeast from an older kid I had, so maybe it was too old, maybe it was just bad yeast. Well, the problem is that we did start some kind of fermentation. We did have fermentation going, so the yeast cells were viable at, to, to some point. Um, next issue could be temperature. Um, even though I have full AC in this house, however, there's just points of the days where, you know, out here in Vegas, we face toward the west, the, the sun comes in, it's just this house gets up into the 80s. That's higher than normal range, but just slightly. It's not you know extreme if the house got up to 100 then maybe that would you know that could be a problem but it's probably not that um another issue that we run into especially with this sugar you know, solution that we're doing is once i dump the sugar in there the sugar's naturally going to absorb the water and become absorbed by the water and thus it's already you know uh has so much water activity in it, it's already consuming the water in a certain sense. Well, the yeast also need to be hydrated. They also need X amount of water. And they kind of, if you put too much sugar in these, that it becomes a battle for that resource of water. And um, sometimes the yeast loses out to the sugar because you put the sugar in first. Um, that could be the issue, but it's probably not because it's not that high. If we had to put five pounds of sugar in here instead of two, then you know our gravity reading would have been real high and it you know probably would have been too much for the yeast to handle. We're at one we were like so we started at 1.082. That's high for a beer, but low for some wines. Or it's it's higher, but it's not too high. So that's again probably not it. Uh, each one of these things could have had some effect, but in and of themselves, most likely they weren't it. Where we may have gone wrong here is sugar, regular table sugar that you use is basically sucrose. Sucrose is made up of two simpler sugars, glucose and fructose. Yeast love simple sugars. And 
but the more complex sugars are a little tougher for them to uh, consume. So probably what could have happened was this yeast got in there and started fighting for resources, started fighting for water, and it grabbed onto those simple sugars at first. But once it took, once it was time to take the next step up, it probably was just too much for it. So that's kind of my hypothesis on what could have happened. Uh, that's why I also always suggest in these go with the fruit juice because it's those fruit juices, especially grape juice, has no sucrose in it, and and this is apple, this is grape juice specific, has no sucrose in it and it's full of fructose. So that, that's just such easy lifting for the yeast to do. They love that environment. We're here we're making them do a little work. So now that we got that out of the way, how can we fix this? What's the what's the solution? And this is not just for this experiment. If you have a stuck fermentation, you know, you are either homebrewing a beer or wine or whatever, this uh, this hopefully is handy information. Um, we can attack it a couple different ways. If you think it's water activity, like, well, I just have too much sugar in there, then you could dilute and cut down. Now, that'll cut your ABV down, but it will make life easier for the yeast. If you don't want to do that, um, there's a couple other ways. If you think that it's too much sugar, but you don't want to cut back, you can uh, switch yeast to a higher gravity yeast. If you think that that's just the problem, that's too much sugar, it's not. Um, I don't think that's the issue here, though, because again, we used a, I believe, a champagne or a wine yeast. They're both, again, can handle this amount of uh, gravity in here. So I don't think that's the issue. Um, what we can do from here, though, you know, some people will say, "Well, I just dump it. We ruined it." No, no, we're not quitters around here. What we're going to do, and probably the easiest solution on any of these things, is always to repitch the yeast. Just add more yeast back on top. We, we tell by the hydrometer reading, we haven't come even close to using up all the sugars in there for, or the fermentables in there for the yeast to have. So there's plenty of food in there for the yeast. Um, they just got to be able to digest it. We got to help them with that. And that's uh, one of the things we're going to do. We're going to take some yeast nutrient. We didn't use it before, but we're going to use some yeast nutrient. Just give it a hand in uh, helping it work up the chain of sugars to the more complex sugars. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to hydrate the yeast before we pitch it. Uh, at the start, we just pitch dried yeast in there. But again, if it's got to compete with the sugar for some water or whatever, let's give it a hand, let's do it beforehand. And so we're just going to take a little room temperature water and sprinkle our yeast in there, give it about 10 15 minutes to fully hydrate so it doesn't have to compete with the sugar for hydration, and then we can put it in. Um, also, I'm going to switch yeast a little bit. Um, I'm going to go with the ale yeast. Ale yeast uh, generally ferments at higher temperatures than your regular wine yeast or uh, especially lager yeast. Again, even though I got the AC going, it's just a little warmer in this room. So we're going to pitch some ale yeast so it can uh, hopefully uh, thrive better at the uh, elevated temperatures. So that's going to be our plan of attack. We're going to um, Actually, I'm going to pitch in, I think it's a half a teaspoon per gallon, something like that. Half, half, and we'll pitch in some yeast nutrient, then we'll hydrate um, an ale yeast, and then we'll pitch that in, and hopefully we can kick uh, fermentation back off. So let me do that, and we'll come back to see if we uh, start her back up. All right, gang, so it's been about a week, and I have some good news. We were able to successfully... Uh, restart our fermentation. We've had a stuck fermentation. Uh, but we went back, added additional yeast, yeast nutrients, and we were able to kick back off. Just did a hydrometer reading. We came in at 1.020. Our original gravity was 1.060, I believe. So that gets us to around 5.2% alcohol by volume. Uh, we could probably let this go a little bit longer, maybe get an extra percent or two. Uh, ABV out of it, but we're kind of successful at where we were shooting for. Again, we're just wanting to see, you know, can we produce alcohol with just sugar and water, you know, and how that process would look. So we did that, and we also recovered stuck fermentation, so we're doing pretty good. Where do we go from here? Well, conceptually, you can start drinking this stuff now. And I poured just a little shot on the side. I'll give her a try. 
Bleh. Bleh. There's still some sweetness left over. Uh, not a lot. It's not as, again, you would think as much sugar as we put in there. It would just be all sweetness, but not really. Just tastes like pretty bland, flat, simple syrup for a lack of a better term. Uh, also, too, I would not suggest drinking it for another reason. Uh, if you could put your ear to the hole of the fermenter, just like there's there's a lot of CO2 in it. There's a lot of bubbling going on, and um, it's similar to wine that hasn't been degassed. If we were to just consume this, we'd get a lot of that CO2 uh, in our gut, along with there's still an active fermentation going on, even though it's slowed down a lot. Still an active fermentation. Between those two, that could give you a case of bubble gut, and you definitely want to avoid that. So what we're going to do is, again, we've got the 5.2% alcohol by volume. That's good enough for us. I'm going to add some potassium sorbate to this and throw it in the fridge. If you don't have potassium sorbate, that's fine. Just you could throw this in the fridge at this point, give it a day or so to, uh, as a bird knows where I'm going with this, to cool down and uh, it'll stop the yeast activity. The cold temperatures will stop the yeast activity and all that yeast will start to fall out so we'll get a clear product uh, along with uh, stopping fermentation. So we'll do that and then we'll come back in a couple of days to uh, talk about how we're going to add flavor to it. Uh, also talk about uh, you know if you want to bottle it or not. Uh, you definitely don't want to bottle it now uh, with all that CO2 in it. Especially if you're thinking, oh, well, I'll bottle it like beer and add a little sugar, you know, to, to carbonate it. You don't want to do that when it already has so much CO2 in it. So let me get this in the fridge and we'll come back in a couple days to wrap up. Real quick, a little dendum I want to add to the uh, middle of this video. Um, I've said a couple times throughout the video that our final gravity, our final alcohol percentage is 52 I am wrong. I've forgotten the original gravity. I misstated it. It won 1.060. It was 1.082, which means our, our uh, final ABV is 8.1. So if you hear me say that throughout the video, I apologize. I didn't realize it to post-production. So I'm throwing this in the middle of the video just to let you know. Uh, so we actually came out a lot more alcohol than we thought, which is a good thing. But anyway, that's the correction. 8.1% alcohol, not 5.2%. All right, gang, so it's been a couple of days now, and uh, we finally let our final product settle. I went ahead and racked it to another container just to get it off that yeast, and we ended up with roughly le slightly less than one gallon of our finished product, which came out at roughly 5.25% alcohol by volume. Um, quickly, let's recap what we did. The original concept and purpose of this video was to see if we could just ferment sugar and water and get a... A, uh, an acceptable alcoholic product? The answer is we did, but it was a little harder than we thought. Um, the impetus behind this video is my most popular video, Simplest Way to Make Booze at Home, is about basically just making homemade wine. And a lot of people ask, well, I don't have access to grape juice, can I use this other juice, or can I use this or that? And a lot of times I get, well, I just, how about just sugar and water? Can I do just sugar and water? And the answer from this is yes. But what I also get in a lot of those same questions is, well, is this faster? Because in the making of a homemade wine, we shoot for around seven to 10 days before you have a final fully drinkable product where the fer fermentation for the most part is finished out. Uh, this ended up taking us probably three weeks, a little over three weeks to complete. Uh, mostly due to the fact that we had, end up having what's called a stuck fermentation. Now that was not planned in this video, but I'm kind of glad it came around because it, it allowed us to kind of work through that process and how that happens. What we did, what you would normally do in a stuck fermentation, the easiest solution a lot of times is just to re-pitch more yeast in there. Uh, in this case, we need to add yeast nutrient because as we've learned in this process, regular table sugar is actually more complex than like simple fructose, which makes up uh, a, a, a large chunk of the sugars in grape juice. That's why it was so much easier, faster to, again, use something like grape or apple juice than just straight sugars because the sugars are simpler in those uh, liquids than what we had here. So we ended up getting that stuck fermentation because 
that sugar was just a little more than the yeast could handle without the nutrients. We ended up adding nutrients that gave the yeast enough oomph to kind of fight through and then we finally finished out our fermentation. But it's not as easy and as fast as you may have thought. And that's one of the points I wanted to get through on this. Uh, now, however, here's um, some of the positives with this. We basically now have one gallon of kind of a neutral fermented liquid. Uh, not too far off like a neutral grain spirit where you can just have it as that. You could throw it back through the still and add some juniper berries or whatever, and now you got gin. Well, if you throw it in a barrel, now you have whiskey. You know, um, you could add certain flavorings to it. Now you have a flavored vodka. You, you know, it kind of gives you a wide open palate to play with, and so does this. Uh, so I want to talk about that next. All right, where do we go from here as far as flavoring wise? Um, to me, the simplest route to go about this is uh, I'm going to use uh, some Kool Aid flavoring. And if you think about it, when you make Kool-Aid, you start off with sugar and water and then add whatever flavor packet. Well, we just took the sugar and water and fermented it. So now all we got to do is add flavor to it. Um, there are some other options to this, too. Um, actually, this is not too far off if you enjoy malted beverages or the new thing now is these hard sodas. This is not too far off of what they do. Now, by law, they can't use just regular table sugar. And again, it's a little more complex sugar anyway. They use uh, malt, real light malt extract, like you would find for beer. Uh, what they have to their advantage, being large distilleries or whatever, is they have all kinds of filtering equipment or whatever that could take out whatever color. Uh, if you've ever brewed a light beer at home, you know there's still some color you know, in, your, in your beer, even though you use the lightest malt extract, you can't. They're fortunate enough they can filter out all that color and they get back again to kind of a neutral base which then they can add all the flavor extracts they created and these companies have you know labs and units uh, that create these flavor extracts or there's even separate companies that produce all kinds of flavor extracts that they then sell to either distilleries for flavored vodkas or again something like like what we're talking about here and they can add the flavor and then they can add in the carbonation they don't have to worry about bottling it or bottle conditioning it like we would home brewing if you want a carbonated beverage you don't have to have a carbonated beverage but anyway that's kind of how the process gets done in the big brewery so we're kind of replicating something close here so again if you want to go that path i want some kind of exotic erotic flavors again how many different flavors of kool-aid are there out there but then take it in a step further think about the little uh, snow cone machines they sell for kids and they have uh, you know raspberry limeade and they have you know bubble gum and this that, and the other well you can use those syrups and extracts in this um, if you find some root beer extract now you can make your own hard root beer uh, if you have a soda stream machine now you can take those soda extracts add to this and with that soda stream machine you can force carbonate so now you can make a hard cola you know, I know the, the soda stream, they sell their own variations on like Dr. Pepper or Mountain Dew or lemon lime sodas, whatever. You can use this now as the base and create your own hard soda. So there's really a lot, a lot of places you can go with this. And uh, that's the, the neat part about this. I'm going to go ahead. Let's uh, give this a try. I've used a little bit of this, so I'm just going to dump the rest of this in here. Give her a quick uh, little stir. All right, let's give this a try. Great, delicious. That's not bad. That's that's what this was great. Uh, just let you overall not bad um, a couple days ago when I tried just the neutral base 
you still got a little bit of the yeast taste, but that's now pretty much gone from this. Um, you can drink this stuff straight pretty easy. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets you two know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.